In this Bonedo video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to play the ToonTrack Easy Drummer 3 plugin using your electronic drum kit. I'm using the Millennium MPS 850, but the basic steps are going to be the same for any electronic drum set. Now why would you want to do that? The main advantages are a wider variety of sounds and improved realism. So let's compare. I'm using the MPS 850 with a Windows laptop computer and a Universal Audio Apollo Twin USB audio interface, but a cheaper interface would of course also work. Some electronic drum modules have built-in audio interfaces, but I'll assume you're using an external one in this video. The sound module is connected to the computer via MIDI. In contrast to an audio connection, this connection only transmits control data, for example which drum is being played at what time and how loud. A 5-pin MIDI cable is traditionally used for this purpose. Like most modern electronic drum kits, the MPS 850 offers MIDI over USB as an alternative, which is what I'm using in this case. And that's it in terms of wiring. The rest of the setup process can be completed in the audio and MIDI settings of Easy Drummer 3. I'm using the standalone version of the software. If you're on Windows, make sure to select the correct ASIO driver for your audio interface. Other than that, all you need to do is pick your electronic drum kit or the corresponding MIDI part from the list at the bottom. The kit is already playable now. To streamline the process, I'll go ahead and open the electronic drum settings and select the correct preset for the MPS 850. And now it's time for the first test. And that, my friend, is what they call latency. As you can hear, the snare is played with a slight delay, which takes all the fun out of playing. To solve this, I'll go back to the audio and MIDI settings and reduce the buffer size of the driver. In case of the Apollo interface, this is done using an external control panel. With a buffer size of 128 samples, this interface achieves 2.7 milliseconds of latency, but the results can vary considerably, depending on the interface. In general, the buffer size should be set as low as possible, but keep in mind that lower settings place a higher load on your computer's CPU. Perfect! As you can hear, Easy Drummer now reacts without any noticeable latency. The mapping determines which pad or pad zone is assigned to which instrument and articulation. This is where you make sure that you don't hear a cymbal when you play a tom pad. Because we picked the correct preset for the MPS 850, everything is already assigned correctly. The rim zone of the snare pad triggers a rim shot by default. If you'd like to swap it for a side stick, for example, you can do that in the eDrum settings. After switching to the mapping view on the left, I select the desired instrument, the snare in this case. From the list of available articulations, I'm choosing the side stick and I'll activate MIDI Learn mode. And that's it! The same principle applies to all pads and pad zones. After you've customized your mapping, it's a good idea to save it as a new preset. With the settings we've covered so far, you're basically good to go. In the next section, we'll take a look at some more advanced adjustments. From now on, I'm using Easy Drummer 3 as a VST plugin in Cubase. To do this, I've created an instrument track and selected the eDrum device of the MPS 850 as the MIDI input. The concept is similar in most other DAWs. 
Now I'll go back to the eDrum settings and load up the preset I've saved in the standalone version. One of the new features in Easy Drummer 3 compared to previous versions are velocity curves for each individual instrument, which are easy to edit. As an example, I'll pick the snare again. And as you can see, there are a lot of adjustments you can make using the small handles on the curve. With this setting, I get the maximum velocity even with lighter strokes of the pad. And in this case, the maximum velocity is limited. But you can also draw in nodes by hand. With this setting, the resolution feels a bit higher at higher velocities. In the lower part of the window, you'll find the extended settings for the hi-hat. One thing to note here are the openness transitions, for which there are three different settings. In default mode, the hi-hat sound reacts to controller changes even after the pad has been played, while the sample is already sounding. While this is the most realistic setting, you can choose one of the other two options in case it causes unwanted effects. In eDrum optimized mode, the sound only changes if the hi-hat is being opened while it sounds. In note triggered mode, the hi-hat sound only changes when a new note is played. The hi-hat range setting lets you adjust the upper and lower limits for opening and closing the hi-hat. You can also adjust the splash sensitivity. After you've made your adjustments in this section, don't forget to save your preset. You can also make your preset the default setting that's loaded automatically whenever you open up Easy Drummer. And now we're done configuring Easy Drummer 3 for use with the Millennium MPS850. Most of these adjustments can also be made in the electronic drum module itself. But if you also want to continue using the module's internal sounds, or if you have another software besides Easy Drummer, it makes a lot of sense to make these settings in the software.